Welcome everyone to my latest action figure review as I have the Bandai Tomash Nations SE Figure Arts, The Rebel Moon Nemesis, part of the sci-fi Netflix movie by Zack Snyder. So Nemesis is the third character following Korra and Jimmy, which we saw a few months ago. And it's always nice to see more characters added into a line. And Tomash Nations probably have a deal with Netflix. This is not the first time they are diving into some sort of franchise. They've done it with, of course, Squid Game as well as the live action One Piece. And it's cool to see more characters rather than just always the anime and the comic book superheroes. But of course, you do need to be solely into this movie. There is no history or previous comic books based on this. This is a new franchise. So I think apart from Diamond Select, they may have some Rebel Moon figures. SH Figure Arts is kind of one of the only companies to have them. It is relatively new in terms of a movie. So looking at the packaging, this is really nice. Kind of the same theme as the previous one. It uses the background with the sunset on the farm. And we have the usual titles as well as the stickers. It says Netflix, Rebel Moon. It has the Rebel Moon language. And it is part one, a child of fire like Cora and Jimmy. Although technically they can be used for both the movies. And at the front, of course, we have a really cool shot of Nemesis. And then on the side, we have the titles, the shot of the figure itself. And then on the other side, it wraps all the way around showing her full weapon. And here's a look at the top of the box as well as the bottom. And at the back, we have the figure in different poses. And let me quickly bring in the Korra figure. As you can see, the box is kind of similar. I think Nemesis is slightly bigger due to the accessories. But of course, in comparison to Jimmy, which is the tallest due to the character being so tall. So we now have a nice trio of the three characters so far. So inside we have the background, which of course is the same artwork as the previous two. And I do like this rather than a plain color. And we also have the instruction manual to show you how to put on the accessories. And here is a full look at the Nemesis figure inside his packaging. So here is the first look at the next member of the Velt Resistance. It is the Sword Master Nemesis. So first impressions, I do like the look of this. I think it's a good representation of the character overall. One thing I noticed when I took it out of the box is how realistic the face sculpt is. As you know, Tomorrow's Nations can sometimes be a hit or miss when it comes to the live action characters. But I think the face sculpt is actually really good. And I guess I'm not that surprised because both Korra and Jimmy also turned out to be excellent sculpts. Here we have Korra and we now have a nice collection going on for the Rebel Moon franchise. So I really like how realistic the face sculpts are. In terms of the attire, this is the look we saw of Nemesis, the first appearance I guess. It's the one that she mainly wears for the battles. And spoiler alert, she does have these mechanical arms which she replaced with her normal arms as she had to chop them off to wield those weapons. And overall, I guess it's kind of not surprising in terms of the materials used. Tomorrow's Nations have gone for that soft type of rubber material for the top, which is a separate piece from the body inside. And then of course we have that shine to those metal arms. And then for the legs, this is a real standout. When I took it out of the box, I could actually smell the plastic and surely it was coming from the legs because look how much plastic they've used for this. And it's also a soft rubber material as well. And I can kind of feel some legs inside. So if you look at the bottom, you can see the shoes. But one thing I noticed is that Nemesis stands really well. And that's not the case for figures, as we know. Uh, sometimes they can topple over, but just the amount of chunkiness in these materials, it does make the figure stand really well. So in terms of materials, of course, apart from rubber material, uh, they haven't used any soft cloth like Korra or Jimmy. Of course, they had the specific ones for that type of look. But for Nemesis, I guess she doesn't really need any soft materials. I guess you could have done it for the bandana. Uh, this is actually stuck on. You can't remove it. It's just a pure sculpt. So yeah, that's just kind of the look of this. First impressions, I guess I do like it. Um, obviously, she does need those accessories to really upgrade the displays. But in terms of first impressions, it's a nice one to add into the Rebel Moon collection. Moving on to the different accessories, let's start off with the alternative hands. So in total, there are three pairs. So the ones right out of the packaging, we have the standard closed fists. For the second set of hands, we have a pair of open palms, which can be used for that natural look. And for the final set, of course, it is to hold on to the weapons. And now we can take a look at the different weapons. So it does include three sets of the swords. So the first pair is the ones with the sheath, and they will be connected to the side of the waist, which I'm going to do now. So here are the swords placed on and it is very simple. You just connect it to the waist area. And I believe this is the right look. It does kind of sit in an angle rather than straight down because if you move it, it does kind of detach due to the materials of the top. 
So just be very careful when you install it and it kind of sits at an angle rather than straight down. So this is the look when she's not using the swords. And here is the second set of swords, which of course are the ones to be placed into the hands for that fight pose. And this is the one that I really was looking forward to. Of course, it does kind of give off that trademark look of Nemesis. And this is a very simple one in terms of the materials. It is kind of just one look and it is very one dimensional, but of course it is very important. And when Nemesis is wielding the swords, of course, you can remove the top half from the sheaths to give it that look. And for the third and final set of weapons, we have the flame effects for the swords. So Nemesis has that ability with the mechanical arms to really heat up the weapons to kind of give her that ultimate look. And this is the one that's probably going to be the standout for any display. So it's kind of simple in terms of the materials. They used a translucent color to them. And I think it does kind of work. I guess they could have gone for something a bit different. But it is what it is. And this is probably the one that you need to get her into many dynamic poses to really give the ultimate look. So yeah, this is the final weapon, which I probably prefer out of the other two. So like with Korra, there is no alternative head sculpt included, which I guess is kind of disappointing. You always want that extra expression, but we do have the extra accessory, which of course is her trademark look with the hat. And I noticed even on the manual, it says warning, it may fall off. So there isn't really much of a connection to this hat. You kind of just place it on top of the head sculpt. And the gap is slightly big, so it does kind of just topple down if you move it slightly. So just be very careful when you place it on. And it does give her that ultimate look. And now let's test out the articulation. So the movement of the Nemesis figure, starting off with the head sculpt. So it can, of course, tilt side to side. The head does kind of get in the way, so just be very careful when you're twisting it. But it does go 360 round and round if you want. And then in terms of moving it side to side, of course, once again, the hair kind of gets in the way, so you can't move it much. But in terms of downwards, there is good motion, and then backwards only slightly, and there's a good rotation on the head sculpt as well. And then for the arms, of course, they can be stretched side to side, no problems, there is no hindrance in terms of the shoulders. And of course, you can move it forwards, upwards, backwards, and round and round. And then of course, you can move the arms slightly far back, although not so much you can see it only goes this much and then in terms of inwards there's not much there i guess the extra material for the plastic rubber does kind of get in the way and then in terms of rotation for the bicep there is one and of course there should be an arm bend which is kind of standard and it's the same for the hands there is rotation and there's also a hinge for it and then for the body of course the top does have a separate material of course it can turn side to side no problems it can go round and round if you want and it kind of moves the body inside slightly and you can also tilt it left and right no problems forward crunch and then of course backwards this much but i'm not sure if that's actually moving the inside as well so in terms of the waist there is not much movement but it does actually twist side to side so it's actually good there and then in terms of forward crunch you can see this is how far it goes and then backwards it does have movement as well uh, of course it does kind of move the top uh, with it and then we also have this kind of extra material it doesn't really do much it is just a plastic piece and then for the legs which is probably the most interesting we have this large chunk and okay so when you move it side to side it kind of takes this extra piece out of the legs i'm not sure if that's meant to happen but let's just test out the other side okay it does move it out so is that what it's meant to look like i'm not sure okay it kind of looks weird maybe i do need to tuck it back in but you can see that it's a totally separate piece from some legs inside you can see here so when it comes to the actual turn i guess you're kind of just turning the legs inside rather than the out and of course it does kind of fall apart okay it's probably not the best idea to actually uh, remove or kind of just move this kind of leg part because you can see it does actually take it out totally so i'm going to need to fix this so as you can see i don't recommend moving the legs too much because it does kind of take it apart it is a separate piece from the inside of the legs so i do recommend very limited movement otherwise it's going to take a bit of time to kind of get everything back in place so in terms of the leg bend you can see that it does kind of move and obviously you're moving the actual leg inside rather than the materials outside and the bottom half is also a separate piece so just be very careful in terms of the foot there is rotation there is a hinge 
although it's also very limited and I guess it doesn't really show when you have such long materials. So for the leg part, I guess it's very limited. You can move it around, uh, but it's gonna take a bit of time to kind of get it back in place. So I don't really recommend it. So mostly play around with, I guess, the top half. So now for the size comparison, starting off with the SE Figuras Rebel Moonline with Korra and Jimmy. Most of the time, to my nation's free is the limit, so I'm unsure if they'll give us more characters, but no doubt this is a great start. And here it is next to the SE Figuras Wonder Woman from Wonder Woman 1984, as well as Aquaman from Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. And here it is next to the Mafex line from Zack Snyder's Justice League with Superman as well as Cyborg. Of course, Ray Fisher was also in Rebel Moon. And here it is next to some Marvel Legends with the Renew Your Vow Spider-Man and the Deadpool Legacy Wolverine. And finally, next to some Jada Toy Street Fighter characters with Chun-Li and Dalsim. So now for my final thoughts on the SE Figurance Nemesis for Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. This in terms of a display is up there with Korra and Jimmy. It does have that realistic face sculpt, the design of the costume is nice and we have plenty of weapons for a variety of poses. So it really is a great addition into the line. The problem however I have is mostly the articulation of the legs. The way it's built there's little to not much movement and it really falls apart. I guess they could have made it slightly better, maybe used some soft materials or just done it another way. There is also the hat which is a good look and also important for the character, however it doesn't really sit well as there's no connection to it. Although it does do the job when you're not moving the figure, most collectors do want the accessory to sit well and not just fall with a minor touch. Other than that, it is a really good look. I guess they could also add an alternative head sculpt, although they didn't have one for Korra either. Since she didn't really have much expression or emotion shown, I guess it's fine for this one. So I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. It's great when you pair up with the others in the line. In terms of the presentation, that's the main thing. It does really look good and it does have all the accessories. So no doubt if you really enjoyed the Rebel Moon movie so far, this is one you certainly have to get in your collection. Check out my Korra and Jimmy reviews if you haven't already and stay tuned to more. Thanks for watching.